People have been asking us why we have come to Cash Marina and also why we've come to Turkey. Yeah. Um... just before 7am on a Wednesday morning and we're on a bit of an adventure today. Well, when I say we, it's not Andrew and I, it's Kev and I. Kev's hired a car and we're gonna take a three hour drive to Marmaris and visit all the boat pawn shops. We're also gonna treat ourselves to an Indian takeaway to have for dinner when we get back. Obviously we'll have to microwave that, but I digress. We've got a boat shopping list of a lot of little things. Uh, there's still some incandescent globes on the boat and I want to change those out for LED. There are a few little niggly bits and pieces that need bits and pieces. So we'll drive up there, have a look around, and uh, see what goodies we can haul home. It's Kev, all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. <laughs> we, are we locked and loaded? Uh, yes, we're all ready. All right. Ah, I'm Reno. We are going all French today. <laughs> That was an easy three hour drive down from Cash to Marmaris and we just stopped at our first place that we're going to check out. This is an electrical store and we're going to see if they've got oil filled electric heaters because planning ahead for winter on board the boat, an oil filled electric heater is probably one of the most effective ways of heating the boat because it really doesn't put out a lot of moisture and as we know in the winter when it gets cold, moisture in a boat is not good. Anyway, we go inside this place and uh, see what they've got. See if we can complete that mission on stop one. Okay, they didn't have any oil-filled electric heaters in that place, but I did score a printer cartridge and a mouse mat with a gel part of it for resting my wrist when we're sitting at the computer for many hours. Onwards to the next door. Kev's the chauffeur today. He knows his way around well. <laughs> we are still hot on the trail for these oil-filled electric heaters. Kevin's just spoken to a guy from one of the yacht brokers who he knows very well and he's pointed us in the right direction. But seeing as we were close to Marmaris Netzel Marina, we've come in to have a chat with the office staff because Kev's got to pick up some paperwork. Yeah, we're not really just here to curve at all the nice boats. People have been asking us why we have come to Cash Marina and also why we've come to Turkey. Yeah, well the Covid situation gave a lot of uncertainty about where we could travel, where we couldn't travel, things that may change as we were travelling somewhere. So we didn't want to take a chance of travelling through to other parts of Europe from Greece and having to get stuck. Uh, for another year and another winter in uh, a European country where basically our Aussie dollar was getting thrashed by the exchange rate with the euro. Especially uh, in marinas as well, because well, yeah. we would have had to have looked for a marina for winter. For winter, definitely. Yeah. So we made the decision to come back to Turkey where the Aussie dollar and the Turkish lira are more in our favour um, so our, our budget lasts a lot longer. Yeah. That was one of the main reasons. Yeah. Other reasons are we've got lots of really good friends here already yeah. and there is such a lot of sailing opportunities up and down the coast with many many beautiful anchorages yeah. sheltered. Yeah. yeah, sailing season in Turkey is definitely a lot longer than the rest of the Mediterranean. So why Seta Marina and why Cash Marina? Well I think Anshas Ans answered the why Cash Marina. We have a lot of friends here and it's a beautiful marina. In fact, it's one of the most attractive marinas I've ever seen. The town itself is a gorgeous town as you'll have seen from our previous videos when we were here last. The other thing is that Seto Marina has 10 marinas in a chain and when you take out a 12 month contract with any one of those marinas, you get 30 days access at each of the other marinas. So if we decide to go to Istanbul, for example, uh, we can sail all the way up the coast of Turkey to Istanbul and uh, we can stay in two, a choice of two marinas right in the, uh, the area of Istanbul. Mm. And all Any the way marinas up, along the way Along as well. the way as well. Yeah. So, you know, we're not really restricted to just cash and, you know, going out for a week this way or that way. We could actually spend a good four or five months 
just going up to Istanbul if yeah. we really wanted to. And, you know, also east to um, Antalya. And uh, Finnecke, yep. 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 So that's another reason. And also, they do have an offer so that if somebody in one of the set of marinas invites you or introduces you to the marina and you take a 12-month contract out and they have a 12-month contract, you each get an extra month. How can you say no to that? So when we got introduced, we got 13 months because Jim on Acheron introduced us. Yeah. And we introduced some friends to Finike. Mm. They have a catamaran down there. They got an extra month and we got an extra month. So mm. it, it works out quite well. Yeah. Cash Marina, the Marineros are brilliant. Fabulous. Just really good at their job. They know what they're doing. Um, the, the fairways are huge. Uh, other marinas, we've heard other people talk about other marinas and how cramped they are and how the fairways are so small that you have to be you know, really skilled to be able to mm. manipulate your, your vessel mm. in the very short confines. So th there's that and the, the facilities on site here are very good. There are full maintenance and service facilities as well. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a Chandler on site. Mm -hmm. There's also a Chandler in Cash Town. Yeah, oh, well, it's a hardware store really, but does a lot of boat stuff. Yeah, a few uh, bars and restaurants. So all in all, this is why we chose this marina group and this is why we chose Cash. Yeah. Now, let's talk about the pros and cons of marina life and anchoring life. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Directly behind me is probably one of the most popular boat porn shops here in Marmaris in Turkey, East Marine. And uh, we're just going to go in there and see if we can tick off a few things from our list. But come in and have a look around. Heaps and heaps of anodes. Luckily for me, they've got Harkin stock in, and I've just got the uh, cheek block that will go back onto the front of our boat and it will put the furling line for the head sail in the correct position so that's really going to help things i've been waiting to get one of those for over a year and a half now finally got one okay thank you very much good issue our time in marmaris is coming to an end we have been to the boat pawn shops we have crossed 85 percent of things off the list when i get back to abc i'll show you what i bought and explain why i bought it and what i want to do with it <laughs> we've now got one last chance at finding oil filled electric radiators and we're heading off there now if not then we will try and buy them online and have them delivered to cash marina and then we've got three hours to head back to cash for a beer now Let's talk about the pros and cons of marina life and anchoring life. Yes. Yes. <laughs> We've both got pros and cons for each. Yeah. And some of them are different. Yeah. Aren't but, they? but I think you're more of a marina girl and I'm more of an anchor boy. Well, I can't say that. I just think I'm more. I enjoy the benefits of the marinas more than you do, I think. Okay, well, let, let's look at the pros, the benefits of marina life. All right. Okay. Well, where do you start? Hot. Hollywood showers 24-7. Okay, I'll agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's also really easy and convenient to get on and off ABC using the passerelle rather than, you know, bouncing up down on the dinghy. Especially if you've got cases. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess, yeah. Okay, I'll give you that one. Of course, with the long, hot showers, we also get access to normal toilets, so we don't have to always consider, you know, how full the uh, black water tank is getting and then consider okay well it's probably close to needing emptying so we've got to go move on to somewhere where we can empty it yeah how far is so, the nearest pump out so place that is a pro for sure how long can you hold on it <laughs> <laughs> is a pro isn't it it is it's also handy for grocery shopping and there's a market on a friday which is great for uh, veggies and fruit also boat bits boat bits yeah yeah and getting um, things couriered yep anything we need. Address. We, we do have a permanent address. And also, you know, official paperwork as well that needs an address. Yep. Got one. Got one. It's great to be able to meet up with old friends and new friends socially. Yeah, uh, there is a large social aspect to living in a marina and I'm, I want to make a point about that in the cons section about marina, but I'll, I'll hold off on that. I'm not sure if that microphone's picking up this little bit of wind that's now picking up when we've decided to film, but um, generally 
uh, if you are in a marina then you are protected from big winds and big swells and of course in the Mediterranean in the winter time particularly January February mm. you can get some pretty gnarly storms mm. coming through mm. well I can use the microwave hairdryer iron and other high wattage items on board because we're plugged into shore power yeah okay apart from the microwave I don't care about the rest. <laughs> How often do you use the microwave? Really? I made popcorn the other night. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> and I can do my figure eight keep fit dancing on the pontoon because it's flat and I'm not going to kill myself trying to do it on the boat. Yeah, I guess that's, yeah, <laughs> fair enough. What don't we like about marinas? You kick this one off, Dad. Okay, this is going to sound wrong. I was a DJ, professional DJ, for 28 years, I think. And to be honest with you, what I don't like is the the bars, uh, the restaurants, the live music uh, playing loudly at night. Um, I guess I'm turning into an old fuddy duddy. An old fart, I was going to say, but yeah. Right. <laughs> I was being polite. <laughs> it can feel confined, you know, because you've got lots and lots of other boats really close by you. Yeah, I'll give you that. Now, onto the points I was talking about earlier about um, the socialising. Um, obviously, we live. On board ABC and we work on board ABC and it's quite easily a 40-hour week editing the videos writing blogs replying to emails replying to private messages I, I think it's we just... work to a schedule as well like the, yeah. the video has to be up Sunday Monday you're Sunday. editing yeah Tuesday I'm final editing yeah. and publishing yeah. uh, Wednesday Wednesday's kind of free, kind of free. Thursday, Thursday we write blogs yeah, Friday we tick all the boxes group. and do all of our uh, social media networking sort of stuff and then Saturday the video goes out and we we have mm. to be there to answer mm. questions so we have a schedule and yeah. our whole life revolves around that schedule of course <laughs> if people are just living on their boats and they see ABC and look we don't mind people coming and saying no. hey ABC hi uh, we watch your videos and, and we, we actually like love to say the hello. editing side and all of that you know it, it's not a it's not a full negative here no I, it's just it's more of a it's like oh god I'm trying to work <laughs> I, I think I think it's uh, for you when you've got your head uh, along a train of thought. When I'm, yeah, when I'm focused, broken, yeah. I don't want that train of thought broken. So that to me is a bit of a, a negative. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult to it, it, yeah. Me, I go, oh, isn't that excuse? Yeah, excuse it's to get out of work. It's an excuse yeah. to get out of work. I'll just have to work quicker next time. <laughs> <laughs> so don't take that the wrong way. No. If you do see us, come and say, Please, hello, ABC. We watch your videos and just say hi and we'll say hi yeah, and, and have a chat. And if, if we do have something that we really need to focus on, we'll let you know. But we'll also work out when, when we can actually catch up and spend good time with you. Yeah, right in the middle of video editing right now. What are you doing at six o'clock tonight? Yeah. We'll meet you in the bar. Yeah, we are very close to the marina and we've got a breeze coming now. But when you're actually in amongst other boats, there's very little air movement and it can get really hot. The sun's beating down, especially, you know, actually inside the boat itself. When of course it is the height of summer and you think oh I just want to jump off the back of the boat and yeah. get in the water. Well yeah. you don't want to do that in a marina for no. several reasons. Straight current could kill you. Uh, somebody might probably, have flushed. <laughs> somebody might have flushed. We heard a story about that but we won't go into that. That was very naughty and very gross. Marina swimming is, is not recommended. No. I just want to do a caveat on the swimming. Here at Cash Marina we're actually standing on a large swim platform because they've cordoned off one area where you can actually walk to and swim. Yeah. And I think the, the other con is, of course, compared to anchoring, marinas are expensive, full stop. Somebody did ask, uh, what was the cost for us for the 12 months? And we got uh, a special price of 34,250 Turkish Lira. I'll let you work that out in your own currency. If it's pounds, you're doing really well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, but there is that. One last stop before we start our three hour trip home is we're going to the uh, Indian restaurant that does Indian takeaway in Marmaris. And um, I know it's a three hour trip back so it'll be cold, but we've got a microwave. Angela and I haven't had Indian food for two and a half years. So <laughs> this is a bit of a treat. We've just walked into this Indian restaurant in Marmaris and while we're waiting for our takeaway order to be prepared, I noticed this clock on the wall here, it says Bradford time. So we got talking to the owner of the restaurant and he is apparently a famous Indian chef from Bradford in England. 
Uh, and so he's just telling us about some of the things that he does um, because we were saying that we missed our Indians for two and a half years. And he has a service where you could email him uh, what sort of spice mix you want to make your you know, chicken or lamb or whatever Indian meal you like. And he will courier the spice mixes to your address and then you just cook it up at home in five or ten minutes. All done. Flat bread, pilaf rice, everything what you normally have in India. I've got six systems. I supply many, many places in Istanbul and Ankara. Also, did So why not us? So this is going to be a new service yes. to cash. Please. Thank you. Try it now. We will try. And let everybody know. We will. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody. So what do we like about anchorages, Baz? Okay, uh, well generally there is always a breeze blowing through at anchor, which is nice and you're not hemmed in with other boats so the breeze can get to you. Blows to you yep. all the time. I and mean, in saying that, anytime you want, the pool is open 24-7 right off the back deck. Yep. Also you've got ever-changing vistas. At the one anchorage you've got, as the boat swings round, you've got lots of different views of the one anchorage and then you've got the freedom to go from place to place so you've got lots of different anchorages by day and by night. Anchorages are generally nice and quiet and peaceful places at night. There might be someone having dinner but generally they won't be up until midnight or one o'clock or two o'clock or even three o'clock playing loud music. I do like getting dressed up and I also like not getting dressed up and that's one of the beauties about being at anchor. You don't have to. You can wear pretty much whatever you want and a bikini if it's really hot. All day you don't have to worry about breaking any social conventions. Okay, that is probably a good thing because I just like to wear shorts. Same pair of shorts all summer. Yeah, conventions or not. <laughs> When we're at anchor, the next nearest boat is usually quite a distance away, so you've got lots of distance between you and your neighbour. So there's unless you're in Formentera in summer. Ah, oh, yeah, Formentera <laughs> anchorage is, is the ex exception to the rule, I would say. There's probably more in, in, in the sure. Ionian, but yeah. you know. and also you've got the freedom of staying as long as you want or as long as you need in an anchorage before you say, well, time to move. Time to move. Let's go somewhere else yeah. and you can just a yeah. banker and move on yeah oh and you also get to explore lots of different places inland as well you know ancient ruins beautiful little towns in the hillsides yep. and freedom to do that for each island or anchorage that you actually visit yep and best of all anchorages are free <laughs> so what don't we like about anchorages well if I get dolled up and we're going ashore my hair will get messed up and I worry about getting salt water on my clothes and also ruining shoes. Not a good look. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Doesn't bother me, I wear the same shorts. Ooh. Same shorts to go ashore. Same ones as I wear all day. I mean, it takes longer for me these days to get a good look and to have it just blown away in about five minutes on a dinghy. <laughs> no. <laughs> I like to ride the dinghy fast. Our freshwater consumption has to be monitored and uh, taken into consideration for where we can next fill up with fresh water. Your black water has to be monitored of course, so you know that, that is a con. There's only so much black water we can carry before we need to pump out. It can get noisy during the day with day tripper boats and banana boats and jet skis. Yeah, uh, they do go away at night time though, this is the bonus. Yeah. Wi-Fi at Anchorage can sometimes be very slow or non-existent uh, so you have to pick and choose your anchorages, especially us, if we want to do work um, mm. uploading videos and answering emails. Yeah, true. Also, I've only got the choice of gas or gas to cook with. It's not a big deal, but I've, you know, it's just a two ring burner, so not, no big parties and things. <laughs> Access to the shore or back to ABC via the dinghy can be a little bit tricky at times, especially if you've got a bit of a strong wind blowing and the anchorage is a little bit lumpy. <laughs> and the boat's going like this yeah, and, and the, the dinghy's, dinghy's going like this and I'm trying to get the rope over the cleat <laughs> and Barry's trying to keep it all <laughs> together. Yeah. So those are our pros and cons yeah. of anchor life and marina life. Mm. If you have any pros or cons about marina life or anchor life then please feel free to leave them down below mm. in the comment section and we'll see if maybe we can include them in a future video. Mm. If you like this video of course don't forget to leave us a big thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber 
click the subscribe button, click the bell icon, and you'll get notified every time we release a brand new episode of Sailing ABC. And now for something completely different. Yeah, we'd like to do our third annual Q&A this new year, and we want you to let us know what questions you want answered. So again, in the comments section down below, leave your questions about this year, how things have been with COVID, what our plans are for the future, anything you like really, and we'll make sure to include them in our 2020 stroke 21 Q&A session. Yeah, looking forward to that one. Join us next week on Sewing ABC as we welcome Michelle on board as our first patron guest. And we have a wonderful week exploring Kickover.